In 1964, 13 men were sent to jail for a total of 307 years for carrying out Britain's notorious Great Train Robbery. But just four months later, Charlie Wilson broke out in an escape as daring as the robbery itself. A gang of men on the outside stole a builder's ladder to scale the walls of the mental hospital that lay next to the prison. Then they used a rope ladder to clamber over the 20-foot high prison walls, knocked two guards unconscious, and freed Wilson and three other prisoners from their cells using a master key. The huge manhunt was launched to find the fugitives, but it took police three years to track Wilson down to his hiding place in Canada. Great train robber Ronnie Biggs was similarly disinclined to serve out his sentence and plotted an escape that was to prove more successful than Wilson's. Mrs. Williams, will you tell us what happened at five minutes past three? Well, I was doing my housework when I... I did notice a green zephyr go up the road, took no notice. Then a red van went up. I thought, oh, someone's moving. Then I heard an engine running. So I rushed out and got my handbag, thinking it was the baker to get a loaf. I get to the door and I see the red van is back and back onto uh, backing and the Zephyr following it. So I uh, stand there and I don't realise and I think a man's got a silk scarf over his head tied on top, looked like a coconut. And I thought, oh gosh, it's a, it's a, oh, it's a spring, it's, they're going to get someone out. And um, then they get a sort of platform on top of the uh, van and something went over the wall, which obviously is a, um, a ladder. The man was quite um, a stockily built man, with blue overalls on, as I say, this silk stocking over his head. And you knew then it was going to be a, a Oh, spring. as soon as I see the masks. Then I look further along at the Zephyr, and the man there has come out, and he's got a silk stocking on with a scarf halfway on, round his face there and a peak cat, and um, I notice he's got a, 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 a rifle, so I think this is where I go in. I go indoors and shut the door very quickly, bolt it. I don't know anything, what am I going to do, because there's nothing I can do to help them. So and then I, what happened? I, I, so after a while, when I sort of calmed down, I went and had a look at my bedroom window, and I see two prisoners come over the wall. I only saw two. I must be... Pacific on that. How, I did how were they dressed, in. Mrs. Williams? Oh, in their in, um, blue overalls and striped shirts. But while Biggs was getting away, great train robbery mastermind Bruce Reynolds, one of Britain's most wanted men, was captured in 1968 and served a decade in the slammer. On his release, he became a minor celebrity and published a best selling book, Autobiography of a Thief. Biggs escaped to Paris, where he received a new identity thanks to forged papers and plastic surgery. In 1965, he moved to Australia under the name of Terence Fuminger and met up with his wife and children. However, after five years of living quietly under his new identity, the police closed in again, and Biggs was forced to flee to South America, leaving his family behind. As Michael Haynes, he forged a new life in Rio, Brazil, but received the tragic news that his eldest son had been killed in a car accident in England. He resolved to give himself up so he could return, but then discovered his 19-year-old Brazilian girlfriend was pregnant with his baby. Big stayed on in Rio, but in 1974, desperate for money, he was caught in a trap set by Scotland Yard detectives when he agreed to provide the Sunday Express newspaper with an exclusive story. However, the Brazilian government refused to extradite the father of a Brazilian citizen and ordered his release. In 1981, former soldiers of the British Scot Guards abducted Biggs. He was held on a yacht in the Caribbean while his jailers attempted to sell him to the highest bidder. Years later, the head of the operation claimed it had been secretly underwritten by the British government. There was much sympathy for Biggs, and even the train robbers who served their time were keen to see him stay free. I think they've taken a man away from Brazil, from his child. I mean, when will he see his child again? He's got to do nine years' imprisonment in his country if he comes back. Do you think he should come back and go to jail? Of course he shouldn't. Good luck to him. I'm choked that he's been captured. Barbados police eventually took Biggs into custody, but a court ordered his release. 
He was flown back to Brazil in a Learjet paid for by two television networks, keen to get the exclusive story of Ronnie Biggs reunited with his son. Biggs was allowed to stay in Rio, provided he reported to police on a regular basis. He eked out a living cashing in on his notoriety, selling T-shirts and souvenirs, and starring in advertising campaigns. Biggs' young son, Michael, also helped out. Interviewed on television after the foiled kidnapping, he had performed a song and dance routine that caught the eye of a record executive. Michael joined several other children to form the Magic Balloon Gang, and their first record went gold. The group toured Brazil and made enough money for the family to buy their own apartment in Rio. However, some bad investments saw Biggs' financial situation turn sour again, and he was forced to resort to selling his story and playing up the media coverage of his situation. Biggs also claimed he secretly returned to England a few times, where he recorded songs for the great rock and roll Swindle, a film about the Sex Pistols, and collaborated on a documentary about the great train robbery. The fugitive wrote up his life story in Odd Man Out and contributed to an album called Mailbag Blues that was intended to be the musical soundtrack to a film about his life. Biggs received support from some unlikely quarters. The train robber became a tourist attraction for Britons visiting Rio, and he welcomed them to his home, where he was happy to have his photograph taken and provide his autograph for the bargain basement price of $50. In 1999, Biggs invited more than 100 people from around the world to celebrate his 70th birthday party. They included old cohorts Bruce Reynolds and Roy Shaw. The party went for a week, and Biggs said he had no plans to return home anytime soon. No way, no way. I want to be, be live and die in Brazil, and I want my ashes to be spread over Santa Teresa. But Biggs' health was fading fast after a series of strokes, and in 2001, he sent an email to Scotland Yard saying he was prepared to give himself up if authorities sent him a passport. Biggs arrived back in England on May the 7th, 2001, on a charter jet provided by the Sun newspaper, which paid his son Michael 20,000 pounds for the exclusive story. Although the media reported his return was due to a shortage of funds to pay for medical treatment, Biggs himself said he just wanted to enjoy a punt at a local club. But it wasn't to be. Biggs was arrested and taken to serve the remainder of his sentence. Although he spent the last few years petitioning for early release on the grounds of ill health, he's now in lower security Norwich prison where he's awaiting the decision of the Ministry of Justice on whether to grant him a compassionate release. The great train robbery remains Britain's most famous heist, and Ronnie Biggs, one of the country's most recognized criminals.